Hello folks, Dane here from Extra Credit Design Club. Today, we are going to talk about how powerfully color can influence and manipulate the human brain. Like I said, today we're going to be taking a deep dive into the psychology of color. And that includes not only talking about what the colors mean, but why and how they came to hold that meaning. Understanding the impact that color has on people is crucial for brand designers, illustrators, people who wear clothes, people on dating apps, pretty much anyone. So let's dive right in. Today we're going to start with the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, like my shirt. First up, red. Okay, so the first two things that I think of when I hear about the color red is number one, a red heart, and two, the mean red guy from the Pixar movie Inside Out. From these two simple examples, we can quickly discern that red has been embedded in popular culture as representing love and anger. There seems to be a dichotomy between love and anger. They're opposites, right? How did one color come to represent the strongest yearnings of the human soul, love and hate, or love and anger, passion and fury. The answer may lie in our physiology. There are a couple clues that we can dig up to discover why we have such a visceral and kind of primal reaction to the color red. I'm going to talk about three ways that the color red impacts us, and they are power, danger, and romance. First up, power. Did you know that when babies are born, they can't perceive color? And do you know when they start perceiving color, what the first color they see is? Red. The human predilection to have a visceral and strong reaction to the color red is fundamental to human development. Red is not only the first color of the rainbow, it's the first color that we see. And because of that, it holds a preeminent place in our brains. Over time, the color red was adopted by religious and governmental authorities to assert their power and dominance. No wonder red has developed in modern society to represent power, royalty, and strength. Number two. Danger. Sorry about that. I don't, I don't know what that was. Guess what else is red? Blood. Blood. Blood! Blood! Blood. Have you ever seen a large amount of blood? It is super alarming! It's pretty hard not to have a visceral and gut-wrenching reaction to the sight of blood. Even if you binge watch Law and Order. Doom, doom. When we see something red, a bloody wound, a sore, a dumpster fire, a freaking black widow with its terrifying rotund red hourglass belly, that means danger. Like watch out. It means something is not right. It means aggression. When you get angry, when you get mad, blood literally rushes to your face. They say he was red in the face. Ah, he was red in the face. She had a red hot temper. So that's danger. The third meaning, of the color red is romance. So we'll talk about romance and desire. It's obvious that the color red has been tied to love for much of human history. Once again, we know hearts are red. Are red. So are roses. So is your face when you're in love and blushing all the time. Red is not only tied to romantic love, but also a loyal, sacrificing kind of love. The blood of Christ, viewed by Christians to be the greatest act of love, firmly cemented the color red as one of sacrifice and passion. Red is so synonymous with passion and attractiveness that in a landmark 2008 study, it was shown that men rate women as more attractive when they're in front of a red background or wearing red clothing. We're talking being shown the same photo of the same woman, one where she's wearing red and one where she is not, and rating the woman wearing red as being more attractive. So to review these three things, power, danger, and love, the one concept that binds them all together is passion. 
Red is a visceral, arousing, and deeply rooted color in the human psyche. In another study, it was shown that being exposed to the color red had the following physiological effects. Elevated blood pressure, enhanced metabolism, an increased heart rate, an increased respiration rate. Mm, that sounds a lot like a list of things that happen to you when you're either in love, in danger, or feeling like you're on a power trip. That brings us to the modern application of the color red. Society is full of examples showing power, danger, and romance. First off, we adore celebrities, right? And something that is kind of synonymous with celebrity culture is the red carpet. The red carpet symbolizes that these people walking down it are more important than you who are just on your like dirty carpet eating potato chips or whatever. So here we have, <laughs> here we have <laughs> some very wonderful photos from the Grammy Awards in 2003. Your boy Bootsy Collins, looking like a king, very powerful. Who knows who this is? Yeah, that's your girl Avril. And finally, the last photo, I, sorry, I, I just don't think that no matter how red the carpet is that you could make bowling for soup look powerful. Another way that the color red has been used to show power is in propaganda posters for authoritarian and communist regimes from the USSR to Germany to Shepard Ferry <laughs> and Obey propaganda posters. The color red is used to really just strike a chord of power and dominance and strength and assertion of the human will. Red motivates people. A couple more color geniuses who have uh, taken the color red to a whole new level. The legendary rock band, The White Stripes. Every single thing they ever did was red, white, and black to show this kind of power that they had, this raw Detroit rock and roll power. The last example I have of power is British royalty. Like I said, in the medieval times, the color red became deeply meaningful to European Christians. The cardinals would dress in red in the Catholic Church. Great emperors and kings were painted with red clothes or red shoes. And in the modern day, you know, the royal guard still wears all red. The queen, all the royal family, they wear red. It's a powerful color. While we're on that note, go look at any American political debate and look at the colors of politicians' ties. They're red. They're all red. Second, very obvious examples of danger. A stop sign, a danger sign, a do not enter sign. And we're like, oh, something, better back up, better not do this, red, whoa-oh. It just, it just sparks a sense of danger within us. Again, coming physiologically from that relationship with like the human body and blood, especially. Some examples of romance, just go to a grocery store during Valentine's. You got red hearts, red candy. You got this very alluring photo of someone's red lips. Red is used as an attractor, a representation of love, of desire, and of romance. And while we're talking about passion, Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. McDonald's. McDonald's and other fast food chains have really capitalized upon the color red as being tied to like a craving or like a desire, a wanting. So that sums up the color red. Next up is yellow. A quick internet search will tell you that yellow is a happy color associated with warmth, joy, and energy. But yellow is also used to show caution or danger. Think about those wet floor signs outside the McDonald's bathroom or in your elementary school. To understand how yellow became attached to these meanings, we have to go back in time before man built a corporate empire upon the earth. Where does yellow occur in nature? The sun and fire. In flowers, yellow is highly visible to attract pollinators. In hazardous animals like snakes, insects, and frogs. And for some reason in non-hazardous animals like birds. 
Okay, pause here for a sec. Personally, I understand dangerous animals being yellow. Like, ah, I'm yellow, don't eat me because I'll hurt you. I'm a weird little poison guy. Danger, I'm a little weirdo that will hurt you if you eat me. Right? Bees sting. Snakes bite. Poison frogs, I don't know, you lick them and you like die or something. That's all fine and dandy, but birds? Turns out, and this is completely on a side from my point, from the point of this video, um, but I just thought it was cool. Birds actually gain their pigmentation from their diet. Carotenoids found in nuts, flowers, and insects will give the birds their distinct plumage. So a bird that eats a flower or a bug with yellow pigmentation, its feathers will turn yellow. Flamingos, they eat shrimp <laughs> that, are, that have a pink color, and so when flamingos eat the shrimp, they turn pink. If their diet lacks in the shrimp, they kind of fade to white. So there's your useless bird facts. Anyway, that brings us to food. Bananas, lemons, peppers, tomatoes, egg yolks, honey, all of these foods are yellow. Oh, pineapple. Don't forget about pineapple. One other place that go, one other place that yellow occurs in nature is in gold. So imagine you're a prospector in the 1800s in California and you're just out in the Sierra Nevadas just looking for gold and you're looking at gray rocks, you're looking at more gray rocks, you're looking at gray rocks, you're looking at some gray rocks, and then all of a sudden, amidst the gray rocks, a shimmer of yellow, a glisten of gold. That is a very joyful moment. So, from these observations of the natural world, we can discern that yellow is hardwired into our brains to represent either joy, light, and energy, or danger, and caution, and poison. In a study in the Journal of Environmental Psychology, they found that the color yellow is associated with happiness to different degrees, depending on where you live on the earth. Specifically, how close you live to the equator. The closer you live to the equator, the less you associate the color yellow with joy. The farther you live from the equator, the more you associate the color yellow with joy. It's because you're starved of that sunlight. Sunlight and sand and beaches and fruits, those things just don't happen up there. And so when people who are from those colder and more frigid and murky climates see the color yellow, it actually makes them happier. In other words, someone in Finland is going to get way happier from the color yellow than someone that lives in Egypt where everything is yellow. The sand, the sun, their camel friend, their friend who has jaundice. I don't know. I don't know. The sun is no fun without rain. To review the color yellow and the meanings that it has for us, first was joy. The joy that comes from yellow has been embedded in popular culture by the ever-present yellow smiley face. The iconic smiley face was drawn by Harvey Ross Ball in 1963 as a little button to help people working in some sad office somewhere to feel more happy about working in their sad office. And it was so popular that it got bootlegged and copied until it was everywhere. And yellow, as a result in our minds, is just permanently associated with the yellow smiley face. It makes us happy. Yellow is happy. Yellow, happy. Happy, yellow. Same thing. Yellow is associated with warmth because sun. But here's a good one, energy. We use yellow in modern culture to show when something has energy, it's electrified. Or in this case of little baby Hercules, we got the lightning bolt is yellow, his hair is yellow, he's glowing yellow. It's all about energy and warmth and light and joy in this instance. Also, we have caution, there's the bathroom sign, and we also have danger, like our weird little frog guy. Finally, blue. Any quick internet search will show you that blue represent peace, calm, and trust. And contradicting that, sadness and cold. Once again, looking at the earth, it's pretty obvious why blue is associated with peace and calm. We've got two words for you, ocean and sky. In ancient Hebrew teachings coming from the book of Genesis, it is taught that God divided the firmament below 
from the firmament above. He divided the waters on the earth from the waters in the heavens, the sea and the sky. This creates a sense of balance between the sea and the sky. This balance is played out through the lunar control of the tide. The tide comes in, the tide goes out. It's predictable, it happens at the same time. It's kind of a balance between the earth and the sky. Looking at this from a biological perspective, blue literally calms us down. Have you ever looked in an operating room or a doctor's office and noticed the colors that things are? I say colors, but I should just say color because the color is blue. Next time you're in a hospital or an operating room, hopefully you're not in an operating room, but if you are in an operating room, look at the colors of the walls, look at the color of the bed, look at the color of the scrubs, the surgical equipment, the gloves. What color is it? It's all blue, it's all freaking blue. It's been found that unlike red, which elevates blood pressure and elevates heart rate, blue decreases cortisol, which is a stress hormone in the blood. Blood and blue actually slows down your heart rate. Being surrounded by the color blue reminds our bodies of being in nature, in the sea, in the sky. Even the most popular white noise calming sounds have their roots in the sea and the sky. Um, a lot of the white noise machines will have ocean waves or a drizzle of rain. Things that are, that, that are associated with the color blue, so it's almost like the color blue has permeated even the sound of the sea and the sky and that it has the same calming effect on us as if we were actually seeing all of that blue. On the other end of the spectrum, we also have the color blue over here doing this crap. We've got Cool Ranch Doritos. We've got people being blue, da ba dee, da ba die. <laughs> blue is my Corvette. It's standing outside. I have a girlfriend and she is so blue. The Blues Brothers. I don't know what some of that stuff means, but it sure doesn't make me feel peaceful. <laughs> I actually feel kind of upset. Like, I'm, I'm kind of mad. I'm kind of mad. But in all seriousness, how did such a calming, peaceful, and trustworthy color also come to mean sadness and grief? Here's a few reasons. Okay, this is a mouthful. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, if a captain or an officer of a ship died, while at sea, the crew would fly blue flags and paint a blue band along the ship's hull. This symbol of grieving was equated with feeling sad or melancholy. Number two, Deborah Devi, author of the book Language of the Blues, writes about how there was a phrase in the 19th century called the blue devils, which was used to mean the hallucinations that would bedevil somebody who had delirium tremors from alcohol withdrawal. Like I've got the blue devils. And it's very possible that, you know, that's another place where the term I've got the blues came from. Finally, we've got an entire musical genre called the blues. And yes, it's all about loneliness, yearning, and grit. And no, Eiffel 65 and Blue Man Group are not included. The roots of blues music came from the plantation songs of enslaved peoples from West Africa. In the 1800s in Memphis and in the Mississippi Delta, a new kind of syncopated rhythm came to be. The music was rebellious, gritty, and soaked in desperation for lost love or lost time. So blues feeling complicated, yeah? You've got calmness and serenity and peace and trustworthiness. And then over here, you've got Blue Man Group, Doritos, <laughs> Captains Dying at Sea, the blues music. Just remember that blue is scientifically proven to calm you down. This study said that blue light accelerates post-stress relaxation, that after a stressful experience, people exposed to blue light return to a level of homeostasis in their body quicker than people exposed to a different color of light. So when you feel confused about blue, just remember it's scientifically proven to calm you down, unless you see it here. That's upsetting. That's it for the primary color, so let's review. Red elicits feelings of power, warns us of danger, and shows us when we're in love. All bound together by a, f a feeling of passion and desirability. Yellow can mean, on the positive side, warmth, joy, and energy. 
And on the other side, caution or danger. Warmth, joy, and energy coming from mainly from the sun and caution and danger coming from when something seems to be wrong, like somebody has jaundice and their skin turns yellow or a poisonous dart frog once again. And blue calms us down, feelings of peace, calm, and trust, but also feelings of sadness, cold, depression. So now you know a little deeper about the power that the primary colors can have over people. And I titled this video, How to Manipulate People, because in future videos, we're gonna look at how brands, artists, designers, and everyday people use color to influence other people and manipulate them to buy products, to take actions, to obey propaganda, all kinds of things. My next video is gonna go over secondary colors, green, purple, and orange, which gets a lot more interesting. So slap that subscribe button. So slap that subscribe button. Slap, slap, slap that subscribe button. Slap that subscribe button. And follow Extra Credit Design Club on Instagram. Once again, I'm Dane. See you next time.